Part two, chapter twenty seven of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty seven The Scholastic Philosophy Scholasticism derived its name from the monastic and Catholic schools, Scholi. It was a system of philosophy which emanated from these schools and gave color to the thought of Europe from the tenth century down to the sixteenth it was based on the dialectics of aristotle and aimed to prove the truth of christianity by the process of logic its history was varied at one time scholasticism was sceptical refusing to admit as truth what could not be proven by dialectics again it became orthodox and was a stout defender of the supernatural element in the thirteenth century it reached its highest stage mysticism appeared in the twelfth century as the competitor of scholasticism for the attention and endorsement of christian thinkers the two represented opposite tendencies scholasticism declared that the intellect must be umpire of truth while mysticism held that the feelings are our highest judge of the truth scholasticism was to the middle ages what rationalism is to the modern period what cannot be proved must not be believed mysticism bore to the same period the relation which schleiermacher's philosophy of religion does to the german theology of the present century the heart is the seat of all true theology scholasticism had but slight bearing on the great spiritual movement which culminated in the reformation while the mystics were among the most powerful agents in preparing the way for luther the nominalists held that general conceptions such as man horse and the like are abstractions of the intellect derived from the properties of the intellect and possessing no existence beyond the intellect that they are logical conveniences of expression nomina mera voces nudi flatus voces mere names simple sounds the breath of the voice the system has its modern supporters in hobbes berkeley hume adam smith stuart and hamilton the realists held that general conceptions have an existence beyond the mere intellect of man that such general terms as man horse and the like have a real existence apart from the manifestations to our senses the nominalist believed for example that taking man as a general conception quote, Humanity existed only in Socrates, Plato, Phaedo, and other individuals, that the term was only an intellectual device for indicating the common properties characteristic of Socrates, Plato, and Phaedo, by giving them the general name man, and thus embracing them in one class. End quote. The realist, on the other hand, believed that, quote, before Socrates, Plato, and Phaedo, or any other individual man existed man as an abstract idea had an essential and immutable reality and that socrates plato and phaedo were men solely in consequence of possessing this ideal manhood quote. between these two classes the nominalists and the realists the whole scholastic system was divided fulbert who was bishop of chartres after 1007 was the first notable schoolman his disciple berengar of tours started a controversy on the lord's supper he held that the elements were changed that christ's body is present but only in the form of bread and wine and not in substance the participant must have faith for by this alone can the elements become effective berengar was opposed by lanfran whose views were condemned by the church at the synod of rome ten fifty anselm in his why the god man held that christ made an active vicarious sacrifice for the sins of the world but anselm does not declare that christ endured the actual punishment for men's sins abelard represented the critical and sceptical element in scholasticism as to the schools he was a nominalist rather than a realist bernard arrayed himself against abelard and triumphed 
a modern compromise was effected between mysticism and scholasticism by peter lombard but the elements were too antagonistic to be of large or permanent influence the thomists and scotists were two culminating schools within the broad domain of scholasticism thomas aquinas the doctor angelicus of his age taught in the university of paris and died in the cistercian convent of fosca nuova near terracina in 1274 his summary of theology was an attempt to represent theology as a complete science he held that revelation is necessary that the knowledge of god is in a measure intuitive in man that redemption is relatively not absolutely necessary and that baptism has regenerative power he claimed that true theology is derived from the union of religion and philosophy his system represented the orthodox element of the scholastic philosophy the scotists derived their name from the founder john duns scotus the doctor subtilis of his time he died 1308 while aquinas represented the augustinian theology and was a defender of the established doctrines of the church duns scotus followed in the footsteps of pelagius and represented the free-thinking wing of scholasticism he held that by our natural powers we can know the trinity that it was god's own good pleasure that there should be a redemption through christ but that god does not command good and forbid evil because they are good and evil they are good and evil because he has commanded and forbidden nothing is sinful or righteous in itself dun scotus gives large place to human merit after the semi-pelagian example johnson in his english dictionary suggests that our word dunce is derived from duns an achievement of his opponents the thomists raymond lully died 1315 was called by his contemporaries the doctor illuminatus he saw in the course of scholasticism only injury to the general cause of truth and aimed at a thorough reform he devised a plan for teaching the truths of the gospel and called his method the ars magna or great art he used certain letters to represent certain ideas his plan was a mechanical one and was designed not only to retain knowledge but to prove the truths of christianity he endeavored to construct a universal science which would prove an irresistible argument for christianity to heathen minds but he misconceived the emptiness of scholasticism and he could never get the church to carry out his projects he was of devout spirit and led a pure life neander says of him that he possessed the enthusiasm of a most fervent love to god a zeal equally intense for the cause of faith and the interests of reason and science lully had a consuming ambition for the conversion of the mohammedans and heathen and it was while preaching against islam in bugia a town in algiers that he was stoned out of the city by the arabs and left dying on the seashore he was picked up by a pious sea captain but on a june day thirteen fifteen he sealed with his death the great idea of his life to conquer islam not by the sword but by preaching some clear thinkers seeing no prospect of advantage to the church from the scholastics declared for the teaching of religion by the scriptures and not by pagan dialectics roger bacon of oxford died twelve ninety four held that the only relief from the wretched quibbles of the speculations of the times lay in a thorough study of the word of god robert founder of the sorbonne in paris wrote in defense of the same necessity for a close study of the written word hugo asanto caro died twelve sixty three likewise insisted on the study of the bible as the only solution for the evils of the times he wrote a postilla or commentary and concordance of the biblical books to him we owe the present division into chapters and verses the philosophic strife of the times had long been bitter and productive of little good both the nominalist and the realist 
had sought to find in the ancient philosophy some support but had leaned on a broken reed the air was filled with war cries the universities fought each other with a spirit not less hostile than that of the crusader when he marched to the rescue of the holy sepulchre heated authors hurled books and pamphlets at each other with relentless fury towns and villages circles of the learned and the ignorant and court and camp were divided by bitter quarrels on the force of logical definitions not since the theological controversies of the fourth century had europe seen such a picture of the warfare of syllables the only relief to the waste of words lay in the fact that it gave proof of the awakening of the european mind even scholasticism was better than inertia in time it had done its work luther with his strong broom swept away the thick mass of aristotelian dialectics and sowed instead the seeds of christian doctrine End of chapter 27